For the past four weeks, I've been having headaches because of this gravity flyer. And not because it's stressful or anything like that. It's a physical thing. And I didn't understand why. And I think I do now. I know a lot of you out there say I'm creating gravitational waves in this thing. I honestly think that it's a microwave that I'm creating. And there's a reason for that. And let me explain, and then you can tell me if I'm wrong or right in this. But this is what it is. We have an anode and cathode when you get into a magnetron and a microwave. They're like this, a post, and then you have a wire that wraps around it. On the outside, you have little chambers, and inside those, you're going to create resonance. So you're creating a resonance chamber. On the top and bottom, you have magnets, and they hold in that so that it can spin. It's pretty much real simple, right? So when we look at the gravity flyer, are we creating something that's much different? So just understand this. On the top and the bottom, we have an anode and cathode. We're putting high voltage in the top and bottom. So we're creating a magnetic field. So it's not magnets themselves, but it's actually a magnetic field from the high voltage itself. In the center, we have a plate and it resonates at a certain frequency. So what happens when you hit the correct frequency that resonates the actual aluminum itself? It creates a microwave. I've been wondering why I've been getting these headaches. And unbeknownst to me, all I've been doing is shooting myself with microwaves. So, I ask you again, is it a gravitational wave that's making the heat come up all the way around the outside? Or is it a microwave? It's an interesting question. And it's a fair one. So let me have you experts tell me exactly what you think it is. Personally, I think it's a microwave. And I keep saying that because of the reaction that I'm getting from it. I've had a headache for four weeks. It just won't go away. You can take as much aspirin as you want and it's not going away. It finally did today. This is the first day that I have clarity. The first day that my mind is working correct again. It has sucked for the last four weeks. And it all goes back to one experiment. I did this and I ran a wave and I called it over Unity. The thing blasted through my whole garage and it nailed me directly within one foot of the experiment. And I haven't been right ever since. Today's the first day that I am. So now that I can look back on it and see what we're doing here and what it's actually creating, now we can move forward and what we do from here. Now what happens when you get the correct resonance signature in this craft? The actual piezo buzzer starts going off. This is no surprise. This should not surprise anyone. It starts clicking and clicking and clicking. Why? Because it's getting more energy than you ever thought it was because it's getting microwaves put into it. It explains the megahertz in that piezo disc. I know a lot of people out there commented, this thing can only go in the kilohertz. There's no way it goes in the megahertz. It's just not possible. Well, it is if you introduce an energy source that is different. So understand what a microwave does. It actually produces a higher form of energy than what you're putting into it that cooks your food. That's pretty much the basic of it. So why am I saying that it's producing more energy than it normally should? because it's producing microwaves. Now, how we use those microwaves is completely up to us. Now, I've shown experiments where I put this little piece of dryer sheet on it, and there's a field around it. When you create the Tesla field on the frame of this thing, it creates a field around it like this. So what happens is you have the high voltage on the inside and upper and lower plate. When you put this dryer sheet in, you're allowing that voltage right there to now be put on the outside of that Tesla field. So what does the Tesla field do? It pushes it out. You'll see in all my experiments that it actually turns up, tries to mess with my computer. It starts flipping things on and off and starts giving me things of USB and plugging in wrong and all this stuff. And it has nothing to do with what's wrong. It's just, it's sending that microwave to my computer and it's flipping it out. So now that we know that, now that we can understand that it's the actual microwave that's doing it, now let's look at this a little bit differently. 
we now know that the field when I put it in the opposite direction when I put the Tesla coil on the top and bottom now on the plates and I put the actual high voltage on the outside what is it doing I am now creating that on the inside the Tesla field and now I'm going like this and it's now the expansion wave that's pushing things out so on the outside where the high voltage is it's now taking that microwave and pushing it out and it creates a bigger field it's a simple understanding but it's a crucial one so you need to decide what do you want to do here do you want the thing to lift then you have to put it in the conventional way you have to put the Tesla field on the outside and you have to put the high voltage on the top and bottom if you want to create something different something like an inertial dampener then what you would have to do is flip, flip the field inside out you would have to put the Tesla field on the inside and take the high voltage and put it on the outside you want to create shield technology or something like that out of this again you're going to have to bring this to the same way the Tesla field on the inside and the high voltage on the outside and it comes into something that we don't see very often and it has to do with how your coils are set up in your actual gravity flyer or in a different experiment say if we wanted to make an advanced one everybody talks about solid state well how would you accomplish that well I've always thought the very simple thing is take your Tesla coil and put it in the center we don't want a straight Tesla coil we want it curved in we want to create a cone on the top that goes in with the small parts on the bottom and the big parts on the top and then we do the same in the opposite so we have two cones going towards each other like this and then we put a ring around the center we're making a bipolar Tesla coil at this point all we have to do is wrap it around with wire and then we can get our Tesla coil to run in that way and it put, produces an energy flow some people out there also want to add mercury to a project well how would you do that well this would be the perfect way if you took that center part right there the round part and you actually filled it with mercury and ran the wire on the outside what are you doing you're giving a flow direction for that mercury to go then you're going to get a magnetic field out of it that's much larger than you normally would that's where the mercury comes into play a lot of people want to add it in a lot of people don't know where it goes and I always ask people do you want the solid state version of mercury where it's basically a superconductor or do you want the liquid form in this case we're looking for the liquid form then we can get it to move along with the actual magnetic uh, energy that's produced around it with the wire around a donut shape for lack of a better term just a basic hollow inside donut shape that's filled with mercury that maybe not all the way so it has space to move but you understand what I'm getting at here so there's different ways to go with this project now we all want it to lift and I understand people out there that are annoyed that every time I do this I don't make it lift is it possible for it to lift absolutely that's why I did this project in the first place but do I know deep down that there's more here that there's more avenues to go down and look at why we're in this working on this machine yeah I do and I think there's going to be a lot of experiments that come out of it so now that we understand exactly what it is and again I say microwave you may say gravitational wave I don't know that there's much difference we see the earth in the magnetosphere and we have microwaves coming out the top and bottom is it a coincidence is it something that they're just like maybe a fraction off from one another and it takes one or two things extra in a device to convert from a uh, actual microwave into a uh, gravitational wave it might just be that way and if that's it that's cool with me I just the reaction I'm getting says microwave what everybody's telling me is gravitational wave I'm trying to understand both in one thing so could it be one could it be the other could it be a slight degree off I don't know at this point it seems like it's probable that that's the way it is but I don't know so I can't uh, tell you definitively what it is I can tell you what I'm getting what it's feeling like what the actual reactions is I mean if you look at the experiment we're hitting 74 degrees on this plate 76 78 we're nowhere near heat 
but when I put my finger on it, it burns. Now, usually that happens in a microwave. So, could it be the gravitational wave burning it? Could it just be the Tesla coil having a strange effect where it burns your finger? Because Tesla coils burn your fingers all day long. So, it could be either one of them, but where it's going to, where it's actually at on the craft itself, you see, it's not on the inner portion of it, not on the center plate, it's not on the inner portion. It's all directed towards the outside. That's what's strange about it. It's all directed towards the outside. Could give credence to the gravitational wave at that point. So, which part it is, I don't know. I just know that as we're building it, we're building a open air magnetron is basically what this thing is when it really comes down to it. I've always said, if you looked at my older uh, work that I did on my channel, I always wanted to put a magnetron directly in the center of this device. What I didn't realize then, and I know now, is that I actually have it here. I didn't realize it was here. I didn't look at the actual signals of everything. And now I do. And now I can see that it's in here. It changes the experiment and how you look at it and how you proceed with it. One, I need more cautious equipment uh, to get into this a little more, especially when I'm putting this much power into it. You know, I, I know a lot of you out there say, okay, you got what, maybe what, 30 inches, 36 inches at the most on your field. My Tesla coil could go way over that. Let me, let me just tell you that. I, I, I have this thing, it's 230 volts that it's available to me and I'm only using 40. Now it comes into the way I wired it because I'm wiring it where the actual thing is pushing back on it so I get more resonance than I do of any kind of spark coming out of it. I know a lot of people get these big wild sparks. I don't. I don't know if you notice this or not in any of the experiments. My Tesla coil, it actually just puts out the actual resonance. So it's pushing a field out, but it's not making huge sparks out of it. Matter of fact, the sparks are about the same as what you get when you click your lighter. That's about the amount of sparks that I get out of this thing. The rest is all pushed into the field. So if I unleash this a little bit, maybe put a potentiometer in there instead of a resistor, then I can adjust that and I can get it to go in different ways. That's what I did with my high voltage. You see, I like to run two flybacks. I think it's so much better to get in there and get a voltage that's not as, uh, have it has many amps into it. It doesn't have that many amps into it. I like the free flowing of how much I can put in there. But lately I've been using this, uh, you know, a power source that's adjustable and I tried to buy one where they controls the amps and the volts. It sucked, okay? And I'm kind of left at the point where it's either buy the $300 one or the $50 one that sucks. And the $50 one isn't going to work. So I'm going to have to purchase the bigger one in order to get this right. There's a reason I say that. You have to have so many amps to magnetize a plate. And because they're aluminum, this is the thing that will drive you nuts. They don't magnetize. They create a field around it that has a magnetic signature around it. But the aluminum itself cannot magnetize. That's why it always pushes the field out from it. That's why you see things getting pushed out when it comes to that actual rotating disc. It's because it cannot hold it in there. So if you want to put copper in there, you want to put steel in there, what happens? They magnetize in and they'll pull the energy in. They'll never push it out. It requires eddy current to push it out. And now you probably are starting to wonder the magnets on the bottom that go through all this whole thing creating the eddy current why is it there well that was a simple answer right there is that the aluminum itself with eddy current coursing through it is much stronger so now it pushes fields out that's why i'm getting a field that comes out of this thing and goes for distances is because the aluminum itself if I created it in steel, it would pull everything in and never be able to push out. That's why I don't do it. Copper itself will get energized in a magnetic field. So it is not a very good product to put into this. We're looking for something that keeps the voltage on the outside. 
it has to go when you take the aluminum disc it has to make the feel on the outside now I've been told to coat this thing and to put different products on it to, to change the way it works guys the fields work perfectly I don't have an issue with the fields working I don't have an issue with getting the gravitational wave and now that I've got this piezo working just right guys I hit the correct resonance frequency a lot of people out there running these things at super high speeds understand this it's not until you get that fan motor that you're really gonna understand this it cannot do those speeds I'm sorry it just can't when you run this thing I have to run it all the way up all the way to 12.3 volts and get this bottom disc to actually be able to rotate anything that's in contact with it slows it down and it won't allow it to go you have to ramp it all the way up in the beginning of the process then you can get the rotational speed up to its max level then you have to bring the thing down because when you bring it down it already has momentum when it runs it will stay at a higher speed than it normally would if you just turned it on that's why you have to start it up first so you can get this thing in the correct spot only when the top and bottom plate are in the right spot do you get the actual resonance out of the center disc the numbers are simple 780 is what the top disc has to be the bottom disc you'll know when it's in resonance because the thing will start to shake what are you going to get the piezo buzzer will start to make a popping sound a clicking sound click 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 the actual part of the piezo itself is going down and it's going like this it's actually popping out kind of like when you hit a drum boom 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 just like that so you know you're in the correct state when you don't get that piezo to pop you're not in the right state it, it's creating power it's creating a resonance frequency through it but it's not creating the one that's appropriate for the aluminum itself and that's when you start getting this next state that comes on that's when all the rest of this the field effects start to come on to this thing it starts to produce something that isn't there normally so when you just run normal high voltage in this spin the disc happy days you're not getting any extra effects a lot of people run this and they go man this thing's junk it doesn't work well it's because you didn't understand it properly you thought you could just go in here and run as fast as you wanted to and you thought you can get this thing to just blaze out and you can get this great feel that comes out of it what well, doesn't work that way you actually have to have this thing tuned and this is what I'm saying when I say to have it tuned there is a frequency that is working with this that is perfect Lexi said it and he said it in an off comment in one of his videos he just set it out I can't get people to understand 13 and what does that mean because he knows that it's 13 Hertz he knows that it's 780 rpm and he can't get people to understand it because they don't understand the interaction of everything else everybody wants to change a device well if his device works why are you change it there's not something extra he added here He's very clear when he talks in his videos exactly what's going on here. He's telling you the stuff that, you know, hey, this is what the product is. This is, you know, what goes in here. Here's the dimensions of it. He's laid it all out. The biggest part of the puzzle is can you figure out how we can get every bit of extra effect out of it? That's the whole thing here, guys. When you start to get these effects, you start to put a picture together. And you start to get this craft that is completely different than what you started with anybody can put some metal together anybody can spin some disc not everybody can get microwaves out of it not everybody can get these fields out of it it takes an understanding of this thing to know where you're at I can start this thing up and tune it up and within a few minutes I can get this thing to start resonating perfectly how do I know that it's doing it I know where my speeds are on my disc I can see the actual thing start to shake like this it gets a real feel for it and the kicker is you turn on the piezo buzzer at 
4 volts and 1.5 amps, it starts to click. Click, 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 click at the exact pulse rate of the upper disc. This whole thing runs on that. This whole thing is running on the pulse rate of the upper disc. There's a reason he chose 13 hertz. So now it's up to us to really understand this. I figured it out. I have most of the parameters to have this thing lit. What's the hard part of it? It's the actual spacing of the disks. That's where I'm at, guys. I've run so many tests. I don't think you guys understand. I probably run this thing three or four or five times a day for, you know, an hour a piece on every day trying to get this thing right. But it all has to do with air t temperature and stuff like that that changes the actual disk spacing. So you'll see it in every different one I run in all the experiments, the disk spacing is different. And I change it based on what I'm thinking is going on. Do I have it right yet? God, no. I, I don't have that right at all. I mean, there's, you're going to get, and it comes down to this, just understand this. On the day that you have it just about perfect, you could start to feel the static in the air. I can feel it. It starts to just get up all up in the hairs on your arms. It, it starts to really get to you. Okay, the days that you don't, there's no feeling in here. There's, there's nothing. There's nothing in the room. You, you, you won't feel a thing. And, and it really has to do with what this thing is actually producing. I keep saying that, and I'm trying to drive a point into your head. This thing could be a chunk of metal that spins and looks nice on your shelf. Or it can produce something. It's very simple. Can you get this thing to produce a microwave? If you can, you're on the right track. If you can get this thing to start shaking like this and then start popping that piezo buzzer on the top, you're on the right track. If you're not getting those things, you're not tuning it properly. And you probably have way too much speed in your disc. Or you have an over amount of volts uh, or you have an over amount of amps in your high voltage. Now, when I adjust those, please understand this. What I'm actually doing when I adjust them. When you get more volts, you're able to push a field. Okay, like this. On the outside, if it's on the outside and your test coils parts are in the center. If it's reversed, understand this. You're filling up a chamber. The actual test field goes on the outside. And you're filling up a chamber inside of it. And that chamber inside has all of this air converting to like an electrostatic air inside there is what it's doing. So you're actually creating an actual bubble inside there, but you're changing the air inside of it. Why does the gravity flyer go back to its original position in Alexi's videos? It's because of this fact. It goes back to the actual bubble that it was in before. It has to move back into it because that's the area that it created. So like frequencies, like like frequencies. That's just the way it works. Like areas, like like areas. He's creating one that goes in there and it stays in there. So when it comes out, it automatically wants to go back in there to be in the environment that it likes. This thing is a crazy machine when it comes down to it. You really have to dive into it seriously. If you're just looking to put some high voltage into it, Man, don't bother. Just don't bother. I mean, I, I could do it right now. I I have a AC flyback that I use on here with a voltage multiplier. It makes some gorgeous lightning fields out of this thing. I mean, just starts ripping voltage as it starts to go around. The plates come out, you know, like or like this off of it on the center plate. We just rip voltage all day long. One of my favorite things to do is to rip voltage, guys. I love playing with high voltage. But it's not what this machine is and it's not going to get us there it's the understanding of the aluminum the actual field that pulls out from it because of the eddy current and it it won't allow it to stick to it and when i say the center plate why does it feel like it's magnetized well it's polarized so basically it just means the fields are going a certain way but why is it doing it it's because of the aluminum itself it wants to pull the field in because of the, the magnetization of the polarization on it.
but it also wants to push the field out because of the eddy current. It's what makes aluminum the correct product to use here. It's why I don't use anything else because I know that I need that in here. Other, other things, like I said earlier, it just won't work right. So anyway, I hope this gives you guys a more understanding of what's going on. And I'd, I'd like for you guys to tell me out there, is it, like I said, is it a microwave or is it gravitational waves? Now that you understand what I'm looking at and how I see it, which one is it? Is it a couple degrees off? Is it right there? Or is it the other way? It'd be really interesting to understand. I know a lot of people got upset at me in the comments for that because I wouldn't be definitive about it. And it's because they just don't understand if it's one or the other. I think they're closely related and I think they both show up in our magnetosphere. I just don't know which one's right yet. So you tell me. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw today here, here, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Do all those fun things and have yourself a great day. Thank you.